Hey, what's going on? Dodgers Nation, Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For latest Dodgers news and rumors, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you think that Corey Seager will re-sign with the Dodgers this offseason? And do you think the New York Yankees are a serious threat to sign Seager? And lastly, do you want to see the Dodgers sign both Trey Turner and Corey Seager? Let me know down below in the comment section. And for all the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So I know it sounds crazy, but this could be the last week in the regular season that Corey Seager is a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yes, I don't like to hear that myself, but that is the reality because Seager is set to hit free agency after this season. And yesterday, it was a milestone for Corey Slugger, who hit his 100th home run of his career. And Seager hits this one high and deep to right field. It's gone. And that's when Corey Seager becomes a different player. When Corey Seager becomes Corey Slugger and you start to see more of those doubles and those bombs, he's one of the best hitters in the game. And yesterday, coincidentally, Trey Turner also hit his 100th bomb of his career. It was only the second time in Dodgers history that two members of the team hit their 100th home run in the same game. It happened back on July 17th, 1977 with Dusty Baker and Ron Say. And Corey Seager is heating up at the perfect time. October is just days away, and we saw what he did last year. Corey Seager was Kerry Seager for that Dodgers offense because he carried them most of October. He was the first shortstop in MLB history to hit four home runs in his series. He ended up hitting five that series, and he became one of just five players to have hit eight home runs in a single postseason. That list includes Barry Bonds, Carlos Beltran, Nelson Cruz, Randy Rosarena, and Corey Seager. And since he's returned from the IL after suffering a broken hand back in mid-May, here are his Dodgers team ranks. He ranks second in batting average at 313, second in on-base percentage at 415, second in slug at 522. His WOBA is at 394. That's first on the team. His WRC Plus is 150, which is also first, and he also leads the team with a 2.1 F4. So he, when he's healthy, we've seen it time and time again, he is a top 10, 15, 20 player in Major League Baseball but the big question today is will he re-sign with the Los Angeles Dodgers? Well there's a couple things I want to point out. His agent is Scott Boras or I should say Scott Boras my bad and what that means is he's going to try to get his client as much money as he possibly can so considering Boras is his agent don't expect a smooth negotiation for Corey Seager and the Dodgers it is going to be a fight to the end until he signs on that dotted line and Scott Boras his mouthpiece who is it? It's John Heyman. What did John Heyman report before the season started? Well, he tweeted, like story bias in Correa, Corey Seager will enter the season without an extension. Dodgers made an effort on Seager, who they like to extend, but like the others, he will remain free agent eligible. Lindor remains the lone superstar shortstop in serious negotiation. Now, this was a few days before Lindor signed that $340 million contract, and it tells you right there the Dodgers, they do want Corey Seager. They would like him to be a Dodger for life. It's not like a Manny Machado situation where they made that trade and they never were seriously considering signing him long term. They want to sign Corey Seager. Yes, there is the injury history. We know that, but they also know how productive he is on the field. They know he has his elite hit tool. They've seen what he can do in October, but there was no negotiations. It was clear that Scott Boris was going to take Seager into the open market. That's what he likes to to do and to me I still think the biggest threat is the New York Yankees. Here's some facts when it comes to Corey Seager and the pinstripes. Corey's parents they grew up in upstate New York. They grew up diehard Yankees fans. When Corey and his brothers they were all grown up they were diehard Yankees fans. Who did he model his game after? Who did he idolize growing up? Well it was none other than Derek Jeter himself and back in 2016 when the Dodgers visited Yankee Stadium here's what he told ESPN about his first 
first trip to Yankee Stadium as a player. It's going to be really cool. I plan to get there super early the first day and kind of walk around and hopefully see as much of it as I can. Kind of being out there in the same spot as he was, it's going to be pretty special for me. And he, of course, is talking about Derek Jeter. So some players, they grow up Yankees fans. They're enamored by the pinstripes. Just look at Garrett Cole a few years ago. He went to New York. He had grown up a Yankees fan. He brought that cute little sign to his press conference. And some players, they want to end up in New York. Now, does it make sense for the Yankees? It actually does. He fits in really nicely into their lineup as a lefty. And Glaber Torres, he can move to second. There's been a lot of talk about that for Yankees fans. They want Glaber to go to second. And they want to see Seager in pinstripes. So I think what it comes down to is, one, does he really want to be a Yankee? Because that's a big market. Do I see his personality necessarily fitting in New York? Not exactly, but who cares? I mean, he's a great player. If you produce, they love you. And if he wants to be a Yankee, he'll realize that that's a part of the deal. He doesn't really have a beard, so that's a plus as well. And then also, what kind of contract will they offer him? Will they simply back up the Brinks truck and make him a $300 million man? I do think that's possible. And then what kind of offer will the Dodgers make him? Will they try to lowball him at the beginning of negotiations? Me personally, I think he's an eight-year, $250 million player at the end of the day. $31 million a year if you consider what Francisco Lindor is getting. And you look at the third baseman, too. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, but you know, he's a shortstop. Is he really going to be a shortstop in the future? Does he deserve shortstop money? Well, if you look at the third baseman, you look at the Anthony Rendones, you look at the Nolan Arenados, the Manny Machados, they're making 20 $38, 30, 34 million dollars. So there's money at that position as well. And if you were to sign Corey Seager, you're doing it for his offense, for what he can do with the stick. And also the Dodgers have options at shortstop. They have one of the best shortstops in the game, currently playing second base in Trey Turner. And he's under contract for another season. Gavin Lux, he filled in nicely. He did an adequate job. You also have Michael Bush down the pipeline that can play second. Same with Zach McKinstry. They can sign some some cheaper guys. We'll see what they do with Chris Taylor. So they do have some options. So it's not like they're going to be desperate to sign Corey Seager. They would like to have him back. But right now, I think the Yankees are going to be a serious threat. I do think the Dodgers should really try to bring him back and make him a lifetime Dodger. You draft him. He wins Rookie of the Year. He becomes a multi-time All-Star. He wins the NLCS and World Series MVP. You don't want to let players like that get away, but we have seen it in the past. Look, we've seen Duke Snyder and his career with other teams and Steve Garvey and Ron Say, Fernando Valenzuela, Adrian Beltre, the list goes on and on. But I think that it would be a wise choice to bring him back under the right circumstances. But you make him a very lucrative, respectable offer. But I definitely am nervous about the New York Yankees and Corey Seager. But I asked you guys on Twitter, what kind of contract would you offer Corey Seager? And if you think he's coming back, here's some of your fire responses. At PFEDS87 says, Seager is not going to get that massive contract like Mookie, but will get a big one from Dodgers. 10-year, maybe $325 million. He'll stay with chance to win every year. He'll take it. At Jacob DeLong88 says, I want to keep him, but don't see it. Taylor, Kershaw, Scherzer, Kenley, all hitting free agency. Realistically, Taylor is around 14 to $16 million. Kershaw may do a team-friendly deal and max 35 to 40 million. That's 75 million for three guys with a need for a few other areas, not including Seeger. And I thought this one was pretty interesting from at Bob Browner. One says four years, 130 million with an opt out after two and three. It would let him hit free agency again in his prime. We're not paying him Lindor money with Trey Turner on the roster. If he can get 350 million over 10 years, then good for him. Friedman hates long term deals. And then I like this. Ad Pop DRM says one million dollars. One million dollars. And then at GS Hawk says, hate to say it, here's my take. Corey's going to get 300 plus somewhere else, and I would keep Trey at that price anyway. You were going to have to pay either Cody or Corey anyway, not both. Kirsch is going to have to take a cut, and you pay Scherzer. And then I think at and then I think at Chris Tide speaks for a lot of Dodger fans when she says anything he wants he should be a Dodger for life and all of his fans will reap the benefits for years to come. And then finally. 
finally, at Bowder Boys 3 says, Seager comes back, but only if we offer him 10 years, $250 million, or five years at $30 million a year. So let me know down below in the comment section. Do you think that Corey Seager will be back with the Dodgers next year? Do you think the Yankees are a serious threat? Do you want to see them sign Trey and Corey Seager? I like to have them both, but you start throwing out all these $200, $300 million contracts. At some point, this roster will get old, and you won't have that payroll flexibility that Andrew Freeman likes, and that's what's led to a lot of the success. So that's also something you want to consider. So let me know down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For all latest Dodgers Nation merch, head over to gearup.la. For latest Dodgers Nation news, head over to DodgersNation.com. Download the Dodgers Nation app, and until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.